favorable. That's an understatement. The median age of death for coronavirus in this country is 78 years old. As it happens, 78 is also the life expectancy for all people in this country. In other words, it's dangerous to be an old person who has the coronavirus. It's also dangerous to be an old person, period. At some point, we are all going to die. Dying is the central fact of life. Unfortunately, a secular society has no answer for that, no explanation, and no comfort to give us in the face of it. So no wonder we're so terrified. But what if we were less afraid? What if the news media weren't frothy in a partisan frenzy a month before an election? What if we could think clearly? What kind of conversation would we be having then? We might have some very tough questions for our public health authorities. Donald Trump lives in one of the safest, most controlled environments on planet Earth. If you're looking to stay free from disease, you would try to move to the White House. Everyone around the president is tested regularly. There are doctors everywhere. Donald Trump got the virus anyway. So they're telling us that Trump got infected because he ignored coronavirus protocol. That's a lie. Lots of people follow the rules and get the virus anyway. It may have happened to you. You probably know someone it happened to. Our rules don't work very well. That's the real lesson here. Our rules don't work very well. So we're destroying our society and we're still getting sick. There has to be a better way to do this. And in fact, there is a better way. Sweden is a rational country, unlike us. The Swedish government never forced the entire population to wear masks. Sweden didn't shut down its entire economy. So what happened to Sweden in the end? Well, Sweden has a population of more than 10 million people, and yet the country averages barely more than 200 new coronavirus cases a day. That's been true for the past several weeks, all through the month of September. That's far better than, say, Spain, which has around 10,000 new cases a day, or France, which is reporting about 12,000 new cases a day. Last month, only a little over 1% of the coronavirus tests administered in Sweden came back positive. Compare that to 7% in the northwest part of England. Sweden's per capita rate of new cases is lower than neighboring Denmark or the Netherlands. Here's what Sweden looks like now. It looks like the world we lost. Cafes and restaurants full, people relaxed, no face masks, no panic. Sweden kept most of its schools and businesses open. It asked people to socially distance. Half of Swedes live alone anyway. It banned large gatherings, but imposed few other rules. As for Sweden's buses and trains, well, take a look at this. Not a face mask in sight. Sweden's biggest hospital, the intensive care unit, Unit, overwhelmed in the spring is deserted. It looks like the world we lost. Ah, what a poignant observation that is. Poignant because it's true. The Swedes, unlike our health authorities, followed the science and it worked. Meanwhile, and CNN will tell you this at least once an hour, we've had more than 7 million positive results on coronavirus tests in this country. We've had 209,000 deaths. Those are the numbers you'll see on the screen. But even now, we still don't know what they mean because there's so little transparency. For example, what exactly counts as an official coronavirus death? We wish we could tell you. We know from CDC data that as of last month, the total of almost 6,500 coronavirus deaths list, quote, intentional and unintentional injury, poisoning, and other adverse events as comorbidities. So if people are poisoning themselves or falling off of ladders or dying in car accidents, why are we counting these deaths as coronavirus deaths? That's unclear. We should know, but we don't. We do know that some physicians have said they felt pressure to classify deaths as COVID-related, even though they clearly weren't. In Bakersfield, California this summer, two physicians, Dan Erickson and Arn Masai, said that exact, exact thing in a YouTube video. They're clinical physicians. They treat the coronavirus. And they told us their experiences doing that. But YouTube scrubbed the tape. Suddenly, we're not into details in this country. The big picture is good enough for us because the big picture supports the strategy our leaders support. They think it's working. In New York City, Bill de Blasio announced today he's closing schools and businesses in 20 neighborhoods in Brooklyn and Queens. This is absolutely necessary. Bill de Blasio says, even though, even though, of course, it greatly pains him. It's time for us to rewind.
to take some of the steps we took before that worked. And it's, I don't say it with anything but pain for folks in the community, you know, small business owners, folks who really want to get their lives more back to normal. But this is to make sure that this virus does not spread more deeply in those communities and threaten lives and that it does not spread to the rest of the city. So it's a measure I think we have to take to contain the situation before it gets any worse. You know, it's painful, we're all suffering, but the good news is we're all suffering together and we're doing it for good reason. You know, most Americans could digest that and accept it. Most Americans want to do the right thing by their neighbors and by their country. But it's hard to feel good about this if you can't trust the people making the decisions. And we can't. They don't mean it. They don't really care about slowing the spread of the coronavirus. It's hard to believe that no one wants to think it, but we learned it for certain in June. Back in June, when 1,200 public health experts signed a letter stating that, quote, white supremacy is a lethal public health issue that predates and contributes to COVID-19, end quote. How does it contribute to COVID-19? It's insane. They never explained it. They just kept lecturing. According to the letter, quote, protests and rioting were, quote, vital to the national public health and to the threatened health specifically of black people. The experts noted that they don't approve of, quote, all gatherings. No, not all gatherings. Quote, particularly protests against stay-at-home orders, end quote. So some protests were medically acceptable. Others were a threat to public health. It really depended on party affiliation there. They said it out loud. A Johns Hopkins epidemiologist called Jennifer Nuzzo tweeted this, quote, in this moment, the public health risks of not protesting to demand an end to systemic racism greatly exceed the harms of the virus. What a moron. She kept her job. And by the way, never explained how that works scientifically. We all just sat back and watched, mouth agape, obeying. But inside, we knew. We knew they didn't mean it. They don't care about public health at all. They care about partisan outcomes. Mark Levine, who runs New York City's Health Council, added this quote, let's be clear about something. If there's a spike in coronavirus cases in the next two weeks, don't blame the protesters. Blame racism, end quote. Oh, right, yeah, racism did it. No one's saying racism infected Donald Trump. What is this? Who are these people? This is the most irrational thing that's ever happened in this country, ever. And remarkably, the adults in the room signed on to it. Barack Obama's CDC director, Tom Frieden, said this, quote, the threat to COVID control from protesting outside is tiny compared to the threat to COVID control created when governments act in ways that lose community trust, end quote. It's amusing in a bitter way, if you think about it for a second, losing community trust yet. That happened the day they claimed their protesters protests were safe and ours weren't. We knew for a fact they were lying for partisan reasons and these people should never be in charge of anything ever again. But they stayed in charge. Now they're telling us we can't have confirmation hearings for Amy Coney Barrett on October 12th because it's just too dangerous. You know, coronavirus, clinical obesity, 209,000 dead, whatever. As a matter of science, of public health, Donald Trump is not allowed to appoint anyone to the Supreme Court, period. There is no reason on God's green earth why these shouldn't be delayed other than an effort to rush a witness through in an inadequate hearing where people can't even see the witness face to face. I don't know why you would ram through this Supreme Court hearing 